Hello, I'm at Superbooth today and I'm looking forward to recording some of the synthesizers that we have. And to do this, I created the project in Opus Modus. I have it right here. And I'm going to play a couple of different notes at different velocities, uh, record them with um, this system and then see what we can make. It will be fun. Yeah, so as you could see, that was me at Superbooth, um, which is an event in Berlin where all synthesizer nerds gather uh, to play around with cool audio stuff. And I was one of those nerds this year. And as mentioned in the video, I took my computer with Opus Modus with me and was able to record many of these. Um, and with many, I really mean many. There are more than 280 vendors there uh, showing their new products, which basically means I had a lot of recording to do. So much in fact that I was a complete idiot and I filmed everything in portrait mode, which is uh, why you see two creative videos right now, because obviously that doesn't work for YouTube. Anyway, the recording itself was not always very straightforward since sometimes the devices have multiple outputs and um, or no, and other times they already have very complicated layered patches set up that I didn't want to break. Uh, they didn't always allow for MIDI input, which meant that sometimes I just randomly had to play around to capture some, um, some sound. Um, but I still got um, a great amount of samples um, and mostly using my own custom Opus Modus script. So after the two days I spent recording there, I added all these samples to a DAW. I did some mixing and cleaning and then I separated them into um, individual audio files whenever possible writing the name of the pitch inside the audio file. I then added all these files to Alchemy, uh, which I often use as my sampler, um, and then set up a project to play around with in Opus Modus. And that is what I want to show you today. First, however, I'll quickly show you the recording script, which is what we're looking at right now. And it's a very simple proc n kind of thing, where we generate integers between minus 36 and um, up 24. So that's the, the, the five octaves, right? Um, we then use an integer to pitch. Um, we mess around with the length a little bit because I want to have a whole note, four quarter, quarter notes, and then one rest to uh, record the release as well. And then finally, this, this um, repeats based on four different velocities. So at first, it, it starts with a very low velocity um, and it ends with a very loud one so that we can capture the full range of the instruments. There's actually some very expensive software that does this as well. Um, but in Opus Modus, it just takes a couple of lines and um, you can record anything. You could even send program changes uh, if you wanted to. So that's that's what I used to capture most of the sounds. And then I um, created this score once all the sounds were loaded. So let's take a look at that today. First thing I want to point out here is a neat little trick where if you if you want to set a seed, you can uh, choose a random number um, between this range, in this case, 1, 2, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, um, and then you set that to the seed. And the advantage of that is that if you evaluate your score, you will always see in the listener um, which seed you had. So you can then fix that seed value. So right now, um, it's going to be uh, random every time, at least the random functions. Um, but you can backtrace, and if you have a version that you like, you can put it into the seed value here. Let's say it's this value, and you can put it in there, and then you can fix it to the last evaluation. So below that, I set up a bunch of rests, and this is really kind of a monkey approach. It's not, it's not, it's not the smartest thing to do. Uh, ideally, like I use this to rest certain instruments for certain sections, um, but it's often way better to instead uh, generate your lengths, lengths based on an other instrument. So for example, if you have a kick drum, you can make this the master length and you can use that to uh, make sure that all your patterns are aligning nicely. All right, so then let's get into the instruments. Um, like with the previous score, uh, I have um, all the different sections are aligned here. So if I call a variable A, it's the A section, for B is the B section, etc. But they're all in order, so we can see the whole instrument uh, right here. Um, there's not, in the beginning here, not that many interesting things to show. I'm here choosing an integer to pitch, which um, if you evaluate it, 
turns the integers into pitches. That's kind of straightforward. Um, here we have a little bit of a more complicated looking opus modus notation. That's because I had a MIDI file that I wanted to use and um, I imported that MIDI file and it had some overlapping nodes and I wanted to keep those so that your nodes can be legato. And uh, that's why we see this notation here for multiple voices. If we listen to that, we can see it notated as multiple voices as well. All right now, uh, then we have some, some function here for uh, one of the more atonal sounds that I had. Uh, and since this was very, not very pitched in general, um, I can use just some random pitch samples. You will hear this at the end of the piece. I'll play the piece at the end of the video. And then one a new thing here perhaps is um, using the length Cartesian. I never messed around with it before, but I really liked it. It's a, it's a very convenient way to um, create length patterns that sound actually very good. We can see it right here. Um, so of course it's based on the Cartesian product. And uh, we can see some, some beautiful examples here. Pretty complex, fancy patterns, um, which are very quickly generated with just a couple of parameters. And to control all of that, I'm later using a fit to span. So basically, we have the lengths here. Uh, we can see them right there, or we can listen to them. And then I'm using a uh, Brownian motion function, which I use later as well for my modulation values. Uh, we see some graphs right here. And I'm mapping that to uh, pitches. So I'm, with, with the vector map function, you can very easily do that. You give it basically a bunch of pitches that you want to use, and then um, it maps the created vector values to those pitches, um, which will sound like this in my case. So all of that is then set up in a, um, an OM, OMN, make OMN function. Right, very simple, but it was a fun approach. Uh, then finally, we have our drums here. Again, we use some polygon stuff, and then we assemble everything. And then for the controllers, um, so in this in alchemy, I was able to control the sample position. So this is very nice for sound design. If you load a sample in granular mode, you can um, control the speed that it plays back, and as well as well as the position of the playhead within the sample. Um, controlling this can can create many glitchy, cool effects, which I use at the beginning of the song. And so I'm using that, and I'm, I'm mostly using random shapes here. Um, just to create a bit of expression. So some Brownian motion, some Gaussian motion. And to be honest, I don't really know the difference. I just know what it looks like. And some regular noise, which as you can see, use, <laughs> it's very similar. I guess Gaussian uses a different distribution. Um, then we set these up to our controllers. We keep loop looping them and then we send them all to the DAW. So, this is one video I wanted to make about modular synthesis. And I realized as well that this is not really modular synthesis, what we're doing right now. We're basically sampling, uh, and then we control those samples. So the reason for that is that modular synthesis is kind of really terribly expensive. Um, that being said, I am almost close to having a, a fully functional setup. So. Um, if you bear with me and you are interested in modular synthesis, I will have in uh, a video very soon, I will show you how to control a real modular synth directly rather than recording a modular synth and then controlling the samples. All right, so that all being said, um, I hope this makes you a little bit enthusiastic about a sampling approach in Opus Modus. We don't often think about Opus Modus perhaps when we think about samples. I will um, switch to Logic where I have all my channels set up. Um, so here you can see that alchemy, uh, in this case, with the drum samples that I have, just <laughs> just a kick in the snare. Um, but that's the approach I used. Um, in here, I'm going to hit a record. I'm going to play the score. And then I will say, see you in the next video. And thank you for watching.